What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another installment of Woo! the second best yeah. top 100. That's right. Of all time, you guys Sam's, might give me a lot of leeway here. Sam's is apparently the best top 100. Like four I will five, settle five. for second. <laughs> Today, we'll be looking at uh, number 70 through 61, and I am accompanied by the peanut gallery here, Mr. Tom Basil and Mr. Sam Healy. Why up? Hello. All right, so let's kick it off. My number 70 is a, um, a dice chucker that I enjoy quite a bit with really cool components, very interestingly made game, and that is Roll Through the Ages. Roll okay. Through the Ages has... Um, the bronze age. <coughs> the one that's in a box. This wasn't the other expansion just like a printout? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Roll Through the Ages, the Silver Age, is coming out at Gen Con, I think. Oh, okay. So, so yes, that may even one. be out by the time this video posts. Got it, got it. The first one, then, yeah. Um, it takes a sieve theme and condenses it to about the simplest it could possibly be yes. and still be called having a sieve theme. theme yeah. yeah, which I think is great. The game feels really unique for a dice game. And that's one of my favorite things about it. Not a lot of dice games do something as interesting with just dice and a pad of paper as Roll Through the Ages. That's true. Yeah, and I really like it for that. It's, uh, again, I said it's interestingly made. The dice are wooden. You can see all the wood grain on every die. It just makes you feel like you're playing with this game you found somewhere. I love that, you know. And the, the wooden tablets are really cool with the pegs. I just like the feel of it. And for how few things there are in it, the game actually immerses you, or I find it immersive. So, that is my number 70. I love dice games anyway, and this is a cool one. So, Roll Through the Age is my number 70. And you like that, too? I liked it much better than its predecessor, Through well, the Ages. Well, that's not even like... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, through the Ages was like trying to eat a whole shark at once, without having it dressed or anything. You're just downing it. Uh, Roll Through the Ages actually made the, the, the idea of Through the Ages palatable to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the pegboard and everything like that was kind of chintzy, I thought, but I like the mechanics that they brought into the game, and I like that it was dice, too. So Yeah. Cool. All right, my number 69 is Small World. Small World is a... I'm liking your list today. All right. It's sort of a deterministic risk with fantasy races. Where you are... Except it's not really, like, risk that much. A little bit, right? I mean, that's sort of how you would put it across to someone who has no idea what you're okay, showing them. that I will bite on. Yeah. It's... You're taking a fantasy race, and you are gathering your little troops, which are just little cardboard chits, but it works for the game. Mm -hmm. And you are conquering land, and if there's someone in your way, squash them. And then cash in from controlling area on the board. And somebody will come along and squash you. And then the really cool thing, which is what I think makes the game really, decline. is, yeah, put those people in decline, draft a brand new race, and start wiping through. Um, you'll probably draft two, three, four maybe races throughout a game. And it's really neat. It sort of gives you that cadence. You can hang on to one army and really try to squeeze out some points. And that works sometimes. Or you can just... Draft somebody, shove them on the board, decline them, grab somebody else, and that works too. I think the the fantasy in this game, and I'm not a, a big fan of fantasy themes. Really? You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> in this game, it works for me. It's my kind of fantasy that's lighthearted and... Um, off the cuff and just was sort this of in your top ten fantasy games? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So this is sort of my fantasy game. If I'm gonna play a fantasy game, this is probably it. Because it just has a ton of races. They're all simple to understand, but they give you a little bit of that theme, you know, a little bit of the, the like, oh, these guys 
are the skeletons. So there's a ton of them and they come back, you know, yeah. they tie them into what they are, right. but in a simple way and it's, it's quick. So my 69, Small World. Cool. My 68 is uh, an old, oldish, it's not old, it's like 98 uh, Euro that won the Spiel, if I'm not mistaken, and then sort of hangs out in the middle somewhere and it's not, I don't see a play very often, that's Zuloretto. Zuloretto has, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It's Colorado kicked up, right? I mean, that's basically what it came from. It's Colorado blown up to a full board and now it has this whole theme added on top of it where you are running a zoo and you are drafting animals and putting them into their little pens and it's very immersive that way. It's very, you know, cute. It was in the 2000s. It wasn't 1998. Was it? Yeah. Maybe I'm... It was after Ticket to Ride, I want to say. Or right before it. Oh, wait, I meant 2008. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said 1998. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not that old. Yeah, no, no, I meant 2008. All right. And, uh, yeah, that's a good catch. That's That'd be pretty old. That'd be like when Takao came out. Yeah. I like how we're saying a 20-year-old game. Well, man, that's old. <laughs> no, well, for, in gaming terms, you know. It really is. Yeah. Um, but I love Zuloretto. I think it's, again, it's that it's the weight of Euro I like. Mid-weight family kind of game playing about 60 minutes you feel like you went on this little adventure gathering all your animals and putting your little zoo together and then in 60 minutes you're done and see who won i really like it it's got some very very light money management aspects but it's mainly grab the little cute animals and put them in your pen and try to be efficient you know the money is almost non-existent yeah, yeah. almost i mean it's 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 a, you, it's, barely, you barely use it at all. That's right, true. Right. The money is almost a... But, you know, some of the expansions made more stuff yeah. with the money. It made it more interesting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this game has a ton of expansions, but if you do get into it now, do not go crazy and get them all. Yeah. Play the base game. Like that first. And then if you want to add something to it, get the little ones. That's that, I think that's little the way to go. Little ones aren't bad. Yeah, get the ones that are like five little modules in one thing. I think those are better than the big ones they came out with later. Just for... Hmm, that's for maybe. me. So that's my 68 Zuloretto. Very cool. Whoa. My 67 is an abstract game for two that Tom actually introduced me to some time ago, and I really liked it. As soon as I played it, I was like, wow, man, this is this is great. Very strategic. I love it. And that's the Duke. Which I would say is a chess replacement. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's more so than a Niroshima Hex, which might have been mentioned on another list. <laughs> I, it's it's definitely a more you direct replacement. Metal listing, really? Metal listing. We can cross here from one to the other, man. It's like yes. a superhero comic. You have to go read awesome. issue Sam Healy. To, I love it. I love it. This. Yeah, that'd be part of the commentary missing from this top ten. <laughs> you like just the part you missed, and it's in his list. Um, so the Duke, which is my sixty-seven again, is basically like you said, a chess variant where you have tiles on the board. You are attempting to capture what? What do they call it? The, I don't think it's the king, is it? The Duke. The Duke, right? What's the name of the game? <laughs> yeah, but chess is not called the king. So give me a break. <laughs> so the twist here is obviously you play a tile, and after you trigger it, you activate your piece. You move it. However, it says it moves, and it says it right there on the tile. Then you flip it. And on the other side, it might move differently. It might do other things. It's it's just a neat concept. And it makes you pick them up and look at it and go, if I move here, then it flips. Then I'm directly attacking you over there. Okay. So you know? you're, you're, you're maneuvering pieces, different characters on the board, right. to attack a certain spot on the board. Well, basically. you can attack anybody. It's like chess. You can try to take out the... The whole point of the game, though, is... To take out the Duke. To take out the Duke. Yeah. By doing 20 points you of play? damage to it? Well, I'm just saying, you... you you're In Neuroshima Hex, you're... I get it. Now I get where he's going. I was like, wait, what? You're positioning <laughs> your about this characters the whole time. trying to attack one specific thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Back the on same track. thing. They're actually making a themed version of this, slightly... That's based on the Vikings TV show. Really? Yeah, it's going to have slightly different pieces. That I it? think plastic, like, to so that they look like stone pieces you're moving. Okay. I don't know if it's the, the, I don't think it's the characters. I think it's a game that they play. Got in it. that show. Oh, Something to that effect. That's always a little weird. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, that's my 67, The Duke. If you like abstract games and you haven't played this, check it out. 
My number 66 is a newish game. Well, it's very new. And it's a party game, and that is Concept. Concept, the first time I played it, I thought it was all right. Wow. First time I played it, it was like, oh, this is neat, but a little nebulous in its rules. I ended up getting it. But what you mean, there's pretty much no rules. <laughs> it's really... No, there's close. rules. There's definitely rules. Anyway, I got a copy. I read the rules myself. I figured out how to play, and I played in a group with uh, my students, actually, in a high school setting. And it went over great. Then I played with family. Went over great. Played with friends. Great. The game just works. And... The way I typically play, which is actually in the rules, is you play two people. You know, like two people on one team giving clues. And then we split points. But we're not a team forever. That, that kind of changes, you know. And I think it's just, it's like Pictionary, but you don't have to draw. It, I love it. It's, it's a mind game, you know. It's like, how do I tell you what the concept on this card is with all these sort of weird symbols and putting together ideas like ice and sky, you know, like, oh, hail, you know, like, stuff like that. That's obviously very simple, but I love that aspect of the game. I think it's a brilliant design. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with it, too. I prefer to play it in a group where one person has a clue, and everybody's guessing, and the first person to guess gets points along with the person giving the clue. Right, which is how I play it, but with two people giving clues. Two people giving clues at the same time? Yes. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's... You have two boards? No, no, we, like, look at the thing, and then we both go, uh, and then, like, you'll start doing something, like, oh, I get what you're doing, let me help you. So you sort of both collaborate. Because the oh, game can be... Oh, I see, The I game see. can be hard if you do it on your own. Oh, some of those are really hard. Yeah, right. So two brains kind of working on it makes it better. Sam's just hating this whole thing. All right, moving on, then. This is quite possibly one of the most boring and aggravating games I've ever I will, played. but listen, this is... I'm just... Sorry, Sam I'm has not sorry. passed this legacy down, because I know his son's... Love this That's game. Fine. Oh, really? Love it, love it. They're love their it. own people. They can love it all they want. I just, I do not enjoy it. I'm going to give game. it to them for Christmas. Yes. And they will play it by themselves. Sam will kick it. That was 66 Concept, the Spiel des Jahres loser. <laughs> That's a terrible way to do it. <laughs> Check it out. All right. My 65. This is going to get some hate. I know it. Um, it's in the same camp as what I was just saying. It's that kind of game that is out out of context, ridiculously stupid and silly. When you play it with people that don't care about strategizing, just want to have a fun time and laugh, it is hilarious. With grown-ups, the game is, in English, called Strong Stuff. And it's a dexterity game. You actually have it over there somewhere called Baron Stark in German, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Baron Stark. Yeah. No, in English, why I in English it's, it's for strong this stuff. Game. Not because I think dexterity games are fun. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. This game is for children. Well, eight year olds. But it's a stacking game. You can do that at any age. You're just it's better. It's about a teddy bear walking around with pots of honey. It's a kids yeah, game. Yeah, it's hilarious. With adults, that thing gets high up, and you're like, yeah, and people like, will start ribbing you. Like They'll be like, don't shake that hand. Like People can start messing with you. If we pick Candyland, that would be hilarious also. But no, no, it's not the same no. thing. Again, for me, Strong Stuff is a really fun, I funny game. I saw you stand on my shelf to find a kid's game to make fun of me about. No, I mean, I you, got a, you got a whole bunch of kid's games over well, there. Yeah, they're, they're for my kids. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so an adult This is for me. I'm a, I'm a big kid. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I like okay. a big series. This is a losing argument for me because it sounds bad. It does sound bad. But I, I usually don't like kids' games. But I'm not going to say you shouldn't have this on your list because it's a kids' game. Right. Which is sounds I mean, don't, terribly like what the other side of the table is Don't saying. get me wrong. I usually don't like kids' games either. <laughs> Right? It's not like my top ten you list. You don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. I got your back, bro. No, I'm not defending myself. I'm, I, you're, I get what you're saying. I don't typically like kids' games either. No. But this game is funny with adults. It just makes the people I've played with but crack so up. Looping Louie. Looping Louie could absolutely be on a list like this. I don't like it as much as this. But I could see that. I mean, I've seen tons of adults playing Looping Louie. I think yeah. this is way better than that. All right. Looping, looping, That's why looping. I like it. Uh, Lupin Louis does not deserve to be on any top 100. I don't disagree with you. Thank you. I'm not sure Bar 
Okay, I'm just surprised in the top one under. Okay. Yeah, I think it's great. I love it. I have gotten tons of miles out of that little game. Okay, my 64. Let's get back on track here yep, with yep, stuff yep. that maybe some people can agree with. <laughs> is a uh, a Euro game pretty much through and through. But again, sweet spot of a Euro game, about 45, 60 minutes, with some character powers thrown in there, which I always dig. Radis. Cardis. Just Radis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Radis Cardis is good, too. Okay. I like I like the board game better still. They're not um, very similar, actually, at all. They're not. They're not. So Radis is a game in which you are trying to populate Europe and save as many people as you can from the plague. And that's, that's a nice way of saying you're also trying to destroy everyone else's people. That's also with true, the I guess. The technically, <laughs> you're technically trying to save your people. But your people, only yours. Yeah, only your people. But um, you, try, I, you made that sound all noble. I played the game. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's it's mean, but it's also not highly targeted. I find no, it's not, um, and it's very abstract. It is, it is. But I really like the idea of each turn is very simple. You put out some characters. You use the characters you have, and then you may draft a character either from the center of the board that no one's taken or one someone else has. You can just take, them, take it away from them. Now you have that power too. The, the flip side of that is that when an area on the board triggers, you flip these tokens that say which characters lose a person on the board, which is a little cube. So if I have everybody, I'm getting hammered. You know, I'm having all these powers, but I'm going to get hammered on the board. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most people that survived on the board is the winner. Clean, lovely design. I think it's great, and it, it does something new for a Euro game. And I, that's why I really like it. Would this be in your top 100 without the expansions? Because the expansions add a ton of variety. Yeah, yeah. A lot of different special abilities. And it gets, you can change out and say, I'm going to play the witch this time. instead of I, I forget which one's coming. Yeah, which yeah right. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. absolutely. Okay, because I thought that... Took Radis from being a, a really good game to a very good game Agreed. when the expansions were added. I'm just wondering if it would have made your list without the expansions. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, because I sometimes I don't even play with them because I if I'm teaching someone new I go completely. Well, you don't have to though. You could still teach with these five guys. You could, but I stick with the originals. It's sort of a semantics thing. I want to teach the original game. Okay. Yeah. So that's my 64 Radis. 63 is this game was either the first or second game. And I say game as in like the new game, not, not things I played when I was a kid. It was either the first or second game I played when I got back into gaming. And that's San Juan. It was Carcassonne and San Juan were so my would, gateway games. I would have guessed this for your top 20. I thought you loved it that much. But that's still pretty high. I like it. I like it quite a bit. But again, I mean, I've, ha I've had the game for a ton of years now. Like I said, I played it, you know. I like San Juan a lot too, but I play it in space where it's called Race for the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, right. Um... And that might show <laughs> up later. To spoil Z's list. It might show up possible. later. San Juan, I've played the mess out of, to use a, a Healyism. <laughs> and I think it's just brilliantly simple and takes Puerto Rico, which I had not played at the time, but then later I played it and thought, I still like San Juan better. It distilled all this. This is good. But that distilled game with some neat card play and building the, the buildings in front of you and they give you a little power so you start becoming more and more different from everyone. That's just neat. I just like that. Um, it doesn't look very attractive, especially now, you know? Like with all these great games that come out and look spectacular and the artwork is through the roof. San Juan looks boring. No, no two ways about it. But it's a great design, and I really like it still. So that's my 63 San Juan. Have you played that? No. Really? Play Puerto Rico. <laughs> you hate it? You might still like this, even if you don't like Puerto Rico. Actually, I agree. You might like it. Yeah. But okay. They're not really similar, other yeah. than the name. I might like it then. Okay, my 62 is a little card game that uh, Amigo put out from... Uh, the designer is Emmanuel Ornella, if I'm not mistaken, who is an Italian designer. And the game is called uh, Bizanz, or I think it's Bizanz, B-Y-Z-A-N-Z. -Z. And it is, again, it's, it comes in that little Amigo cardboard, um, little ca um, card game box. And it's a game in which you are basically, it's set collection with auctioning. 
but it's pretty interesting in which you are the sets you're collecting, the set, sets you're attempting to make anyway, also has to be what you bid with. So the cards have a thing, but they have a number. And when the set comes out, you put out a set of stuff on the table, you're gonna collect that stuff if you win, but you have to pay cards out. So you have to be careful which ones go away, because by the time you get rid of these three cards and this comes in, you no longer have the set you want it. So it's, it's interesting that way. It sounds more obtuse than what I'm making. I mean, it sounds more obtuse than it actually is. It's a very simple game. But again, it takes bidding and simplifies it and makes it very cool. When you cash in, when you make points, you have to discard three cards of the same thing and you score just the highest. So sometimes you'll have a five and you're hanging on to it. Even though you could, you're not getting any more. You might as well use it for five bucks to bid. But you're hoping for two more of that color. So it's got that interesting timing aspect to it. I really like it. This is sort of on the obscure side, I guess. But um, if you ever see it or, or are able to get your hands on it, check it out. I enjoy it quite a bit. That was 62 Bizans. And 61 is a game that... Days of Wonder put out back when they were putting out a bunch of stuff, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're like really trickling them out. But back, back when they were putting out a bunch of stuff, they put out Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Wow. Good game. And uh, Cleopatra is this box of toys. St stunning looking yeah. thing. Yeah. This box of plastic bits. And it is gorgeous. You use the first thing you do is you take the box, empty it, flip it on its back. You put a board on top of that. You lay another board in front of it so the thing looks like a castle you're approaching. Mm -hmm. And you put the, these, you build these obelisks and these sphinxes and it's like, by the time you're done building it, you're like, I don't want to put this away. The game looks stunning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I've seen some people who paint theirs too and forget it. It's gorgeous looking. But even, even out of the box, it's very good looking. Mm -hmm. And the game is simple. It's... It's sort of like um, Settlers a little bit. I mean, you're gathering cards, making sets, and buying the stuff. The, you know, the Sphinxes, the Obelisks, the, you're building some, the floor, like mosaics and the floor of the palace. And Cleopatra is approaching. When she finally gets to the palace, you score. And uh, there's character powers in there. There's a Bruno Catala game, so of course, character powers in there. It's just a brilliant... A way to lose... There's a way to lose. Even, right. Yeah, I, I haven't even gone into the corruption thing. Yeah, you, yeah. you can get corrupted to, to do better in the game. But if you're the most corrupted at the end, you're out. Yep. Crocodile chow. <laughs> uh, which is which is the thing that got picked up afterwards and put into a bunch of games. You know, But that, yeah, if yeah, I'm not yeah. mistaken, this was sort of the one that did it. Not sure which one's first, but yeah. I think, I think. Uh, this one does it very well. So... That is my 61, Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Awesome game. Love it. And that's that. My 70 through 61. Apparently, according to Tom, the these are... The longest top 10 yet. Really? Yes. Wow. Finally. Well, he's saying these are getting better. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Catch the next one, and I'll see you. 100 games. Life shower. I'll see voice of the people see God see voice of the people